today we're going to look on how to prove a parallelogram. And it is 12, 4, 18. All right, so first of all, let's graph this. Negative 3, 3 is A. 2, 5 is B. 5, 2 is C. And 0, 0 is D. Okay? 3, 3, 3, 3, 2, 5, 2, 5. Okay? So let me draw my parallelogram. And I'm going to use a ruler if I can find one around here. Oh, where's a ruler? Here we go. Got a ruler. And that's D, all right? Okay, so first of all, if it's a parallelogram, what I want to do is the following. First of all, the definition. So the definition of a parallelogram is two sets of parallel sides, okay? So two sets of parallel sides. So I'm going to look at my figure. What's up, Hannah? So if I look at my figure, I've got parallelogram A, B, C, D. And if I want to prove two sets of parallel sides, I know that if two lines are parallel, they have the same slopes, right? Because if you look at it and say, well, they look parallel, it's not good enough, right? Because if you think about it, if they're off by a little bit, and they go and they go and they go, eventually they won't be parallel, right? So to prove they're parallel, to make sure they'll never intersect, we need to look at their slopes. So let's look at the slopes. So let's look at the slopes of AD, and we'll look at the slopes of BC first, okay? So if I look at the slopes of AD, well, that's easy. It's just going to be down 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3. So the slope of AD is down 3 over 3. And the slope of BC is down 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, okay? Same slope, right? So I can say AD is parallel to BC. A little symbol means parallel, okay? I've just proven that, okay? Okay, I can also then take a look at AB and DC. And again, they'll be parallel if their slopes are the same. So let's check out the slopes. If I go from A to B, I'm going to go up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the slope of AB is up 2 over 5, and the slope of DC is up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sure enough, they have the same slope, so they're parallel, okay? So by its definition, we've proven it's a parallelogram, okay? It's got to be. By its definition, we've got two sets of parallel sides. It is a parallelogram. So we can say, okay, quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. ABCD is a parallelogram. Now, it's got a bunch of characteristics, and that's what you guys did on your posters, okay? Definition parallel sides. Characteristics, okay? Now, first of all, one characteristic, one is that opposite sides are equal. All right, so let's find out what the lengths of these are. So if I want to find the length of AB, and if I want to find the length of DC, length of AB and the length of DC, the easiest way for me to find lengths is just use Pythagorean's theorem, right? So if I look at this and I want to find the length of AB, I can create a right triangle. You guys see the right triangle I've created? I'll just use Pythagorean's theorem, right? I've got 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I can go, okay, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or 2 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared, right? Sure. Yeah, there you go. So I'm just using the orange triangle, using Pythagorean's theorem to find the length of AB, and so I've got a 4 plus a 25 equals C squared, which is 29 equals C squared. 
So C has got to be the square root of 29. So I should get the exact same length for DC, right? And I'm going to show that too. So if I want to find the length of DC, I'll create a, another right triangle. Am I going too fast? Oh, no. A little. Okay, I'll slow down. So all I'm doing is Pythagorean's theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared to find the length of AB. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I want to find the length of DC. And I created a little right triangle in my picture. And so if I want DC, it's going to be the same thing. It's just going to be a 2 squared plus a 5 squared equals a C squared, right? Same right triangle. So we should get the exact same answer, right? 4 plus 25 equals C squared. 29 equals C squared. So the square root of 29. So I know this. I know AB is congruent to DC, right? Okay. Now, it said opposite sides are equal. Well, I've got one side. I've got this. I can mark it now. I'm going to take my figure. I'm going to mark it. I do know that this side is equal to this side. But I'd like to prove the other two sides. So I can do that too. It's actually pretty easy. So I'd also like to prove that AD is equal to BC. I'd like to prove that. But I'm going to do that by finding their length. So again, I'm going to use a right triangle. I'm going to use Pythagorean's theorem. So if I look at AD, I can make a little right triangle out of AD and use Pythagorean's theorem, right? So I've got 3 and 3. So I'm going to go 3 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared, right? Just using Pythagorean's theorem. 3 squared plus 3 squared. 9 plus 9 equals C squared. 9 plus 9 is 18 equals C squared. And of course, that's going to be the square root of 18. And then if I look at BC, if I look at BC, then the same thing. I've got the exact same triangle, don't you? I've got the 3 squared plus 3 squared. And I already knew that was going to be the square root of 18 because I already did the work, right? So here's what I know. I know that also that AD is congruent to BC, okay? Now, there's one more thing I can show on my graph. I can't show the angles because we don't know enough trigonometry yet. We're going to learn some trigonometry, but we don't need to do that because we don't know that yet. But I can show the diagonals. What do I know about the diagonals? What do I know about the diagonals? Anybody know anything? You just wrote it down. What do you know about the diagonals? You, you just wrote it down. What do I know about the diagonals? Anybody? Anybody out there? What do I know about the diagonals? What do I know about the diagonals, huh? They bisect each other. So, if they have the same midpoint, right? If they have the same midpoint, then they would cut each other in half, right? So let's figure out, what's the midpoint of this? Well, let's see. If I travel from here to here, watch me do it. I'm going to go from A to C. I go down one. Go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What's half that journey down 1, 8? Half that journey down 1, 8? 4. Be a half 1, half, and over 4, and there's the midpoint. Right? So my midpoint, my midpoint is at 2 and a half and 1 half. Oh, I said that backwards. Sorry, my bad. One half and two and a half. And if I look at the midpoint of BC, let's see. If I go from B to D, B to D, I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five. And over one, two, it's half that journey. Down two and a half and over one. Okay? So if they have the same midpoint, actually, I think this is supposed to be a one. There you go. So if they have the same midpoint, okay, now what else do we know? Well, we also know that opposite angles are equal, right? I think we've proven that. So okay, so we know that opposite angles are equal, right? And I like how some of you guys put numbers because it really showed. So if I said this angle was, say, um, 65 degrees, I know this angle is 65 degrees, right? <coughs> you also know that these angles are supplementary. Okay, supplementary. 
So what would be the value of this angle? I don't know. 115 maybe? Sure. And that's 115. Okay, so real quickly before I'm done, what are my characteristics? Okay, definition. Parallel sides. Definition. Parallel sides, right? Characteristics. One characteristic. Opposite sides are equal, right? Another characteristic. Opposite angles are equal, right? Okay. Another characteristic. What's the third characteristic? The same side angles. They bisect. Okay, the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, and then what would you say, Caleb? What's another one? Same side angles. Same side angles are, how about we say adjacent angles are supplementary. Is that the one you're looking for? <laughs> adjacent angles. So adjacent angles add up to 180, okay? Now, on your homework, you're going to have to show that, all right? So let me stop the recording, and I'll get the homework to you. we got lots of stuff 